This video runs through how to use payback period as a method of investment appraisal. Investment appraisal is used by a business to work out whether an investment is going to be worthwhile or if they've got a range of different possible options to compare between them and to choose the best one. So this table here is fairly typical of how you might see that information laid out. So year naught is the cost of the investment and then you've got yearly returns over the life of the investment going down the rows after that. So we've got three projects here one of them with a cost of four million pounds, project two with a cost of six million pounds and project three with a cost of three million pounds. And they're providing cash returns over a five year period. And with the investment appraisal method of payback period, we're focusing purely on how long it takes to repay that initial investment cost. And in order to work that out, you need to go through a couple of steps. So the first step is to determine the year in which the payback occurs. But that's not going to be enough on its own. We need to work out how far through that year, because a year is quite a long time and it's not accurate enough just to say that the investment cost will be paid off at some point during the third year, for example. And so in order to work out how far through that year, we have this second step where we put in place this formula of the outlay outstanding divided by the net cash in the year of payback multiplied by 12. And by the outlay outstanding, we mean how much of the initial cost of the investment is still to be repaid when we reach this year of payback. And the net cash is the expected cash return in this year. And we say net cash because some investments might have running costs each year to be taken away from any cash inflows. We multiply that ratio by 12 to work out the number of months through that year that payback happens. We can see how these steps work out in practice by calculating the payback period for each of our three different projects. And project one is going to be really simple because we've got a four million pound investment cost and our returns are going to be one million pounds each year. So we can clearly see it's going to take four years to repay that initial investment cost of four million pounds. So we only need step one there. We don't need the formula for step two because payback falls nicely at the end of that fourth year. With project two, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. And the first thing we need to do is work out the year in which payback happens. And we do that by adding together the yearly net returns until we go past our initial investment cost. So we take 2.4 million, add 1.4 million, which gets us 3.8 million. So we can say we haven't repaid our initial 6 million investment at the end of the second year. But if we were to add 2.8 million onto that, we would get 6.6 .6 million. So we've gone past our initial investment cost. And so we can say that payback happens during this third year. The next step is to work out how far through that third year that payback happens. And so the top half of our formula, we need the outlay outstanding. And so that's going to be worked out by the difference between what we had repaid at the end of the second year. So that was 3.8 million pounds by adding these two together. And what have we still got to repay of our initial investment of 6 million pounds? So the difference between 3.8 million and 6 million pounds gets us 2.2 million, which goes to the top half of our formula. The bottom half of the formula is the net cash in the year of payback. We said payback happens in year three. And so we can see that we've got 2.8 million pounds is our net cash return in year three. We multiply that by 12 to get 9.4. And so that's going to be 9.4 months through the third year. And so our answer then is going to be a payback period of two years and 10 months. And it's 10 months and not nine months because we round that 9.4 figure up because we haven't repaid our initial investment after nine months. So if it's 9.1, 9.2, 9.3, we always round up to 10 months. Now we can apply the same steps to project three, where we have 
0.8 million repaid of three million pounds after year one so we haven't repaid it we have another 0.4 million repaid so we add that to 0.8 million to get 1.2 million at the end of year two so still not repaid our initial cost add the 1 million which gets us 2.2 million we still haven't repaid our initial 3 million pounds investment but if we were to add 1.2 million onto that we'd get 3.4 million which means we've gone past our 3 million initial investment cost so we can identify that payback occurs for project 3 in this fourth year and to work out how far through that fourth year we need our formula and we'd repay 2.2 million at the end of our third year so that means the outlay outstanding we still had 0.8 of that 3 million to repay so that goes at the top half of our formula our net cash in the year of payback is 1.2 million taken from row 4 that's our year that payback happened we multiply that by 12 to get 8 and so our answer there is going to be a payback period of 3 years and 8 months Having made these calculations, we might also need to evaluate the usefulness of payback period as a method of investment appraisal. And we can do that by looking at the advantages and disadvantages. And so payback period is relatively easy to calculate and really clear to interpret. And so you can compare between your projects and the one with the shortest payback period is going to be the winner. So with our three projects here, project two only took two years and 10 months to pay back and so that's the quickest of the projects and so that's the one you choose based purely on payback period secondly it's one of the more accurate methods of investment appraisal because it ignores the longest term returns because we need to remember here that we're working with expected returns so the further into the future that we go the less likely it is that these predictions are going to be accurate and also, if we're worried about risk as a business, a really key question is going to be, when am I going to make my money back? And payback period focuses very specifically on this question by telling you how long it takes to repay the initial cost of the investment. The downside to payback period is that it doesn't give us any insight into profitability. So it focuses purely on how long it takes to repay that investment, which could be seen as a good thing, but you would probably also want to know how profitable your investment is likely to be as well. And as a result of that, it also ignores what happens after the payback period. And so part of the problem with this is that any expected returns after payback just get totally ignored. And so with project three in our example, we're expecting three million pounds of returns in year five, but that just gets totally ignored because the payback happens before that. And that might encourage a business to take a more short term attitude to decision making.